Hi, my name is Pali Singla and I'm post graduating from Thapa University. For uh, this my topic is I state prediction using assembled machine learning models. So let's see what I have done in this. Okay, now starting with the problem statement. My problem statement is uh, uh, to train the machine learning models. I have used 13 machine learning models in this uh, with the EEG data set and uh, so that we can predict the future values of the prediction attribute. Uh, that is the I state prediction. Uh, there are 14 EEG parameters which I have used, and the 15th attribute is the e, uh, the state value. The, now starting with what is an EEG? Is the EEG uh, is an electroencephalogram test which is used for the brain to capture the brain activities. Uh, to capturing, we have we are using the electrodes which are placed on our scalp uh, that captures the electric signals which is transferred between the neurons. This electric signal which is transferred is very very low frequency, so we have to use an amplitude uh, to enhance its frequency so that we can actually predict its meaning. Uh, okay, we have different waveforms for calculating its meaning, so we will discussing it after. The 1020 system is the system which we are using uh, for uh, uh, for the placement of the electrodes. And uh, uh, my data set is a binary classification data set. Uh, this data set uh, is uh, having two main uh, values that is 0 and 1. 0 stands for the closed eye and 1 stands for the open eye. Now the waveforms which are using, this is medically termed as the neural oscillators. These waveforms are of different wa wave patterns formed from the electric signals used by the neurons to communicate with each other. Uh, with the change in our mood that is uh, with, uh, during the anger, during anxiety and during the sleep or anything we are doing these waveforms actually change. Now what are the different waveforms uh, from which we can actually predict our data. The first waveform is the uh, delta waveform which ranges from the 0.25 to 4, uh, 4 hertz and during this day of waveform uh, we are, it is a slowest waveform and uh, we are in the deep sleep or actually unconscious during this. We don't dream in this uh, waveform and uh, we also have involved in the unconsciously body factor which we actually rem um, don't remember as we wake up. Okay, and uh, the next waveform is the theta waveform. And uh, during this dead form, this is actually found in the uh, children. It ranges from the 4 to 8 hertz uh, found in the children. As our age grows, this waveform activity in our brain, cell, brain cells this decreases. It is very dominant during the meditation or we are hyper, hyper focused or impulsive, intuitional uh, during intuition, during deep, deep sleep or meditation, some conscious mind. These are the various uh, times when these waveforms are highly found in our brain. The next waveform is the alpha waveform. Uh, the range of this waveform is 8 to 12 hertz and uh, it's mainly found in the right hemisphere. This waveform start, uh, stands for the power of now. Means the main, uh, the actual mood we are having now, uh, we can uh, mainly predict the, uh, of, uh, of this waveform. It calms our brain and refreshes it. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, this is mainly due to the calmness, creativity, balanced mood, daydreaming, relaxation. Okay. And the next waveform we are discussing is the beta waveform. It is uh, uh, ranging from 12 to 40 megahertz. 12 to 40 hertz and it is divided into three parts during its, uh, during its wide range it's divided into three parts that is 12 to 15 megahertz these are the low beta waveforms uh, uh, 15 to 20 this is mid range and uh, 18 to 20 to 40 it is high beta waveform and uh, this waveform is uh, found during when we are highly excited or when in very good mood very joyous or very angry means during our high moods whatever data uh, these waveforms are found in that uh, more the frequent more of our interest or our anger or our excitement the more uh, frequency of these waveform will be found in our brain cells okay uh, this also stands for the alertness or our iq increase uh, and the next one is the gamma waveform its value is ranging above 40 uh, these are found but very rarely found it is uh, these waveforms are in say connected uh, with the word uh, meditation part, you know, the spiritual part, uh, con uh, connecting of our soul to the board during that time. So, and uh, as soon as the person is asleep, these uh, waveforms are uh, disappear. Highly attentive mental processing we can find out in these waveforms. Okay, the next is the is the 1020 system. 
the 1020 system is an electric placement system which is internationally followed by all the EEG um, practitioners, EEG test practitioners. Uh, during this way, uh, 1020 system, what we are doing, uh, this 1020 actually stands the 10 and 20 numerals, denote the distance between the adjoining electrodes is uh, either the 10% or the 20% of the overall front, back and the right, left distance of the skull. Okay, uh, there are the various, uh, you can say the letters which are is shown in this uh, diagram, uh, each is uh, for a, a specific type. Now next is the data set. The data set I am using over here is, uh, has overall 15,000 instances and 14 electrodes that are namely uh, written over here and uh, each uh, uh, electrode you can see has a different letter associated with it and uh, the letter stands for, for example the F stands for the frontal that is the frontal part of a brain, T stands for the temporal, P for the parental or for the occipital. These are the uh, lobes of our brain. Okay, the right has a, a set of different four lobes and the left has a set of different four lobes. The AF is the intermediator between the FP and the F and the FSC between the uh, frontal and uh, the central the part. And these are the uh, wave uh, the lobes of the her brain, the frontal, parental, occipital and the temporal. The main of a vision which is uh, calculated or you can get uh, the part of the brain which is responsible for our vision is the occipital waveform. Uh, this is the part where our, the, uh, whatever our eye captures is actually interpreted so that our brain understands and we can know what is happening. Now the methodology used is uh, the collection of the EEG data set, then uh, there have been the feature me measurement, then the training and testing over 13 uh, models and then the result an analysis. The result is done uh, uh, using the ensembling and the K4 validation. Okay, now the 13 models which I have used are uh, listed here, over here, you can see that. These are the 13 models I have used. Now the factors which I uh, have uh, used are sensitivity, uh, confusion matrix, Kappa value, specificity and uh, accuracy. Accuracy is the main factor which I am using and the ROC value. Now the ensembling and the KFR validation. Ensembling is basically we have, we are running four more models. For example, I have been running here three models. And uh, uh, these are uh, and uh, we, uh, the result we are getting is in the single parameter. The three model best models are the WSRF, Random Forest, and the GBM. The assembled accuracy I have got over here is the 94.28, which is really high. And the KFR validation is you can say uh, we can. Um, Comparing the accuracy over uh, uh, a number of by running the program a number of times, so then we can actually be uh, sure. Okay, the, this is the range uh, in which our accuracy lies. This is the uh, uh, chart showing the accuracy. I've run the program about three, four, uh, about 10, 10 12 times, and uh, I've assembled the three best models, and uh, the combined accuracy ranges from you can see nearly 93, 95 range. And the results I have got is the Ada Boost, the Decision Tree, the Neural Networks, and the FDC Sensitivity according to that I have listed in where you can see it. Thank you.